In today's video, you will learn how you can make a high sensitivity field strength meter for measuring a radio frequency output. This circuit will require a 100 microamp analog gauge, just like this one, or a panel meter. In my case, I only had a 300 or a 400 microamp meter. So every movement that you see when I demonstrate that only looks like a little if you're using the proper meter is actually a lot. Now the circuit also has a potentiometer which is used to zero the meter and also allow you to pinpoint transmitters and other hidden devices by getting closer to the transmitter and then you zero it and then you try and get closer and you keep zeroing it and you can pinpoint pretty much exactly where the transmitter is hidden. Now I have it assembled on a breadboard. It runs on 9 volts. You will require a telescopic antenna. You can salvage that from an old radio or an old television. And there are very few components in this one. There's a radio frequency coil, which is just 6 turns of 20 gauge wire wrapped around a quarter inch form. A germanium diode. In this case, I think it's a 1N34A. You could also use a 1N60 and I'm sure others will also work. The capacitor is 820 picofarads. All right, so let's take a look at the schematic. Now, in the schematic, it calls for a 2N3819JFET, and I noticed that by switching to a 2N4856JFET, the signal detection is almost double. So if you can get your hands on a 2N4856, you're definitely going to want to use that over the 2N3819. Now if you already have a circuit like this, I would suggest replacing your existing 2N3819 with the 2N4856 and you'll be amazed at the difference in the detection. Circuit's very simple, your 9 volt battery. You have a potentiometer, uses a voltage divider. And in my case I used a 10K, so a 10K you should use. 5 may not be enough, so try a 10. 2N3819, if, if that's all you have, it will work, but not nearly as good as this, as this one here, the 2N4856. Now, ideally, you want to use a 100 microamp, and that will give you the best sensitivity, up to a few feet away at least, to detect. If you use what I have, a 3 to 400 microamp, all the way up to a 1 milliamp, you could still detect but the circuit will appear to be less sensitive because of the higher range meter. So you want to try and stay with a 100 microamp. Now I removed this resistor. The detection is much better without that resistor. So I left that one out. You don't need it. I left the capacitor in and that's an 820 picofarad. So you can have 820 pico and the germanium diode is a 1N34A or a 1N60. I'm sure others will also work. Now for the choke, if you want to make one that's going to respond to a wide range of frequencies, say with the VHF or the UHF band, what you're going to have to do is find a 10 microhenry choke that you could put right in here. This, those are very common. Or if you want to go for a wide frequency like UHF and other frequencies, put a 1 millihenry. So in my case, I chose to use this coil instead right here which is six turns wrapped around a quarter inch form of 20 gauge magnet wire. Your antenna will be a telescopic antenna of course, not just a wire like this. For best results you want to keep all your leads as short as possible and I would prefer to solder this directly to a copper clad board and just use your Dremel to cut some pads. Now this particular coil responds to between 60 and like 220 megahertz the way I have it. So if I want the range to be a little wider, I could spread the coil out further. It'll be better for higher end. And if I want to go lower, I could compress the coil. I could also adjust how many turns are on the coil to get the range that I'm looking for. For instance, if I want this to be very sensitive for a cell phone, I would replace this existing coil with another coil that's 20 gauge, but only wrapped around an eighth inch form one turn and that would be used for a higher frequency. 
So I'm going to demonstrate right now. Circuit is powered. Take a look at the gauge. Let's zero the gauge a little bit. Okay, we're ready to go. I'm going to put my cell phone near the circuit and turn it on. Watch, watch how this works. Pretty interesting. And this is not even with the proper coil for the cell phone. I'm a few inches away from it, but there we go. You can see it detecting the pulses. Turn that off. Now I have a tri-field meter. It looks like a little box with an analog needle on it. And this circuit is actually more sensitive with my cell phone than my tri-field meter is. And that's still using the wrong coil. If I put the proper coil in, the detection would be really, really good. So this would make a great cell phone detection circuit. Now let's try this transmitter right here. This is a FM transmitter I made. It's an excellent one. If you're into transmitters, it's under my video list. It says Loop Antenna FM Transmitter. It's very stable and it works really, really good. Now we are going to, I'm going to adjust. Let's zero the in and out. That zeroes it nicely. Okay, I'm going to turn on this transmitter. It's an FM transmitter. It's an excellent pocket FM transmitter. It's listed under my videos as FM loop antenna transmitter. It's really, really good. It's super stable and has excellent range. If you're into transmitters like this, check it out. All right, so now keeping in mind that the little bit of movement, if it goes two or three, is actually a huge movement on a 100 microamp meter. So if it moves to one or two here, it's actually moving past the midway point on another meter. I'll now turn on the switch. We're about a foot and a half to the left of the receiving unit. You'll see the needle jump up a little bit to maybe the two. So a movement of two or three is actually a large move on a 100 microamp scale. It could be a third of the way or more. So we jumped up to a two. We'll move the circuit to the right. So three. That's probably that's at least at least halfway. Right there be a full scale reading on the 100. And I'm still about 10, 12 inches away from the meter. Alright. Let's keep going to the right. Let's see, keep going up. And full scale, I can turn it off. Play around with the coils. Adjust the turns and the size to get the best response to the frequencies that you're looking for a response from. And if I turn the transmitter on next to the circuit, there we go, a little closer and I pegged out. It's a handy circuit. I'm sure there'll be plenty of uses for this, whether it be for cell phone radiation detection or checking your transmitters to try and tune them for the maximum output.